2024 promises a lot of new processors, graphics cards and APUs for both desktop and laptop platforms. As the year draws to a close, I think it's time to wrap up what to expect and how these launches will boost performance and efficiency. This way you can start planning your next PC upgrade or purchase with clearer insights. But first, CDKeyOffer.com has been my favorite trusted seller of affordable Windows 10 Pro OEM keys for over three years now. They're currently running a Christmas sale on all Microsoft software. Use discount code IVADIM to get 25% off and bring the Windows 10 Pro price down to just $16. Then securely check out with PayPal or another payment method. The key is delivered instantly, so you can activate it and upgrade to Windows 11 for free if you wish to do so. Microsoft Office 2019 and 2021 Pro are also on sale with a discount code IVADIM. Grab them now while the Christmas sale is on! Let's start with the forthcoming graphics cards. Disclaimer: This information is not official. However, it must be noted that it comes from trustworthy sources on the inside. At CS 2024 on January 8th, Nvidia plans to unveil three new graphics cards: the RTX 4080 Super, RTX 4070 Ti Super, and RTX 4070 Super. These cards are designed to address some of the product positioning issues currently faced by the RTX 40 series. The actual launch of these cards will be staggered over the weeks following their reveal. It's important to note that this is leaked information, thus it is subject to change if Nvidia decides to do so. However, if everything goes according to the plan, then the RTX 40 Super series will be subject to seven distinct embargoes as follows. All three cards will be announced on January 8th at 9am Pacific Time, which is 5pm in London, UK. RTX 4070 Super unboxings are permitted to go live at 2pm Pacific Time on the same day, that is 10pm UK time. 4070 Super MSRP card reviews can be published on January 16th at 6am Pacific Time or 2pm in the UK. On the following day, January 17th at 6 a.m. Pacific time, that's 2 p.m. in the UK again. 4070 supercards will hit the stores and reviews of non-MSRP models will be allowed. RTX 4070 Ti Super MSRP card reviews will be published on January 23rd at 6 a.m. Pacific time, that's 2 p.m. UK time. The actual launch in stores and reviews for non-MSRP models will follow the next day at the same hour. Finally, RTX 4080 Super MSRP card reviews will be available on January 30th at 6 a.m. Pacific Time or 2 p.m. London Time, depending on where you live. The cards will be in store the next day at the same time, with non-MSRP model reviews going live simultaneously. The RTX 4080 Super utilizes the full AD103 GPU, featuring 10,240 CUDA cores, 256-bit bus, 16 GB of 24 gigabit per second GDDR6X memory, and a 320-watt TDP. That is a minor improvement over the RTX 4080, whose primary issue remains its unreasonably high MSRP of $1,200. According to industry sources, Nvidia aims to resolve this issue by launching the RTX 4080 Super with a $999 MSRP and a 6 to 9% better performance than the RTX 4080 to take AMD's RX 7900 XTX head-on. If we compare the two on the performance comparison chart, then indeed the 4080 Super looks like the better option. However, we should not forget that AMD's RX 7900 XTX has 24GB of memory and can be purchased for as low as $920 right now. Furthermore, AMD has an option to reduce its price further while still maintaining good profit margins. So, the 16GB RTX 4080 Super at $1000 is still nothing to get hyped about. Yes, it is better than the $1200 RTX 4080, but it is still too far from what I would call a decent deal. The bottom line is, anyone buying an RX 7900 XTX right now should not be worried. Enjoy gaming on it over the holiday season. But if you are thinking about buying an RTX 4080 for over $1100, then you may want to think twice. It's a ripoff. Next up is the RTX 4070 Ti Super. It utilizes a cut-down version of the AD103 GPU, featuring 8448 CUDA cores, 
256-bit bus, 16 GB of GDDR6 memory, and a 285 Watt TDP. Nvidia is considering pricing this card between $799 and $849. The 4070 Ti Super should offer a 14 to 22% performance uplift over the regular 4070 Ti and is aimed at killing the RX 7900 XT sales. If you have your sights on the 12GB 4070 Ti, then it may be worth your while to wait for the 16GB 4070 Ti Super because that extra 4GB of memory will offer a better quality of life over the next few years and will make it easier to resell when the time comes to upgrade. 12 gigabytes is barely enough in 2023. Future games will certainly demand much more. The last Nvidia refresh GPU is the RTX 4070 Super. It utilizes a cut-down version of the AD104 chip featuring 7168 CUDA cores, 192-bit bus, 12 gigabytes of 21 gigabit per second GDDR6X memory, and a 220 watt TDP with a price between $600 and $650. This configuration allows the 4070 Super to perform extremely close to the 4070 Ti in games. To be precise, it will be 3 to 6% weaker than the 4070 Ti according to the latest leaks. The RTX 4070 Super might be the only upcoming graphics card out of the three worth waiting for if Nvidia prices it at $600 because essentially you'd be getting a 4070 Ti level of performance with a decent discount. Nvidia is working on the next generation of gaming graphics cards that are expected to be called RTX 50 series. This upcoming lineup promises enhanced power efficiency, courtesy of the TSMC 3 nanometer technology slated for incorporation in Nvidia's future GPUs. Projections indicate that the RTX 5090 could deliver a significant gaming performance boost of around 40 to 60 percent compared to the RTX 4090. Moreover, Nvidia is striving to achieve an even more substantial enhancement in ray tracing performance with this new generation. First RTX 50 cards are on track to be ready for launch in quarter 4 2024. Historically, Nvidia tends to debut high-end GPUs first, making it highly probable that we'll see the RTX 5090 on shelves by the end of 2024. However, Nvidia, currently holding a dominant position, might postpone the launch to 2025 if AMD and Intel don't pose significant competition to justify releasing the RTX 50 series. Yet I doubt that this scenario will happen because AMD is developing something disruptive for the mid-range GPU market. Despite rumors of AMD cancelling high-end GPUs in the next RDNA 4-based Radeon lineup, they are strongly focused on challenging Nvidia in the mid-range segment. According to an AMD source, they are crafting an RX 8800 class graphics card with a price between $400 and $600 in mind. It is projected to outperform the RX 7900 XT in gaming and potentially reach performance levels close to the RTX 4080. This suggests that in the second half of 2024, a $500 to $600 GPU could make it possible playing existing AAA games at 4K resolution with maximum or nearly maximum graphics settings. This would mark a substantial leap in value. Consequently, I anticipate Nvidia will feel compelled to introduce the RTX 50 series in quarter 4 2024 as planned, because AMD's next-gen graphics cards appear to be well positioned to outshine Nvidia's RTX 40 series significantly in terms of value. The upcoming battle between AMD and Nvidia promises to be fierce, and gamers stand to be the ultimate winners. With more powerful and affordable GPUs on the horizon, the future of PC gaming is looking bright again. A very much welcome change to the currently depressing state of the GPU market. By the way, Intel is also developing its next generation of graphics cards dubbed Battlemage. But considering the debacle surrounding the launch of its first discrete graphics cards called Alchemist, I'm skeptical about Intel's ability to deliver a competitive product, especially on schedule, in 2024. However, there is a glimmer of hope. Nevertheless, don't expect them to challenge Nvidia's RTX 5090 or even the 4090. Even if Intel does roll out new graphics cards, they are likely to compete within the mid-range segment at best.
Now let's move on to the desktop CPUs. The next generation of Ryzen processors will be called the Ryzen 8000 series and they are based on Zen 5 architecture. Zen 5 is a major architectural redesign, focused on efficiently increasing performance. However, the higher TDPs introduced with the Ryzen 7000 series are here to stay. The new Ryzen 8000 series processors will slot into the existing AM5 motherboards. The overall layout of chips underneath the heat spreader is not fundamentally changing, so it will be an easy upgrade for all Ryzen 7000 owners. Motherboard manufacturers simply have to roll out a BIOS software update to support the new CPUs. Recent leaks suggest that AMD isn't planning to increase the core count in their upcoming CPUs. This means we can expect models like the Ryzen 5 8600X with 6 cores and 12 threads, Ryzen 7 8700X with 8 cores, 16 threads, Ryzen 9 8900X featuring 12 cores and 24 threads, and the top tier Ryzen 9 8950X with 16 cores and 32 threads. The new CPUs will be produced using TSMC's 4 nanometer process technology, a significant step up from the 5 nanometer process used to manufacture the current Ryzen 7000 series, making a full generation of process improvement. The non 3D Ryzen 8000 processors are expected to launch in the first half of 2024. A quarter one launch is plausible. I think we will hear more details officially during AMD's keynote at CES 2024 in the second week of January. In terms of performance, these CPUs should once again deliver a double digit gaming performance uplift of around 20%. This notable performance boost is very probable, given the expected over 15% increase in IPC for Zen 5 cores compared to Zen 4, coupled with the transition from a 5 nanometer to a 4 nanometer process and significant architectural enhancements. Moreover, AMD is on track to launch the 3D variants of the Ryzen 8000 series CPUs by the end of 2024, potentially boosting gaming performance by an additional 10% or more on top of that. Considering that the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D is already incredibly fast, just imagine gaining an extra 20% FPS with the upcoming Ryzen 7 8800X 3D. What do you think? Can Intel keep up? Considering that Intel's next generation of desktop processors dubbed Arrow Lake is expected to launch in quarter 4 2024, it looks like AMD will have quite a few months dominating the CPU market with their Zen 5 products. Also, the fact that Intel's newest core architecture called Meteor Lake didn't bring any significant performance uplift versus the previous one is kind of concerning. We can't rule out a possibility that Intel may end up delivering yet another extremely power-hungry generation of processors if the company once again fails to improve its technology. Intel has been cranking up the CPU power consumption over the last few generations to keep the performance at a competitive level versus AMD's products. However, according to Intel's projections, Arrow Lake is shaping up to be a very competitive offering versus AMD's Ryzen 8000 series that are based on Zen 5 architecture. If you've been waiting for a new desktop APU, then I have good news. AMD plans to launch Ryzen 8000 G series for AM5 motherboards in the first half of 2024. The 8000 G APUs utilize RDNA 3 graphics and Zen 4 CPU cores. Recently, ASRock has slipped up and shared a screenshot displaying Ryzen 7 8700G CPUs at data in one of its recent blog posts, showcasing 256GB RAM support on an X670 motherboard. Thanks to that, now we know for sure that Ryzen 7 8700G is an 8-core CPU paired with Radeon 780M graphics. We've already seen this integrated graphics in AMD's laptops and mini PCs. It is good enough to play some less demanding games at 1080p, but it is still very weak compared to something like a $200 RX 6600 discrete graphics card that's been around for over two years and fits perfectly in a small ITX case if you are after a compact PC experience. Additionally, there are more budget-friendly Ryzen 8300G, 8500G and 8600G, but we don't know much about them yet and I don't think they'll be any good for gaming anyway. I'm just happy that we are finally getting our DNA graphics APUs for desktop. Vega Graphics has definitely overstayed its welcome. 
Let's wrap it up by discussing the upcoming laptop chips. My highest anticipation lies with AMD's Strixpoint APUs, built on the Zen 5 architecture. These chips promise an increase in core count, offering up to 12 CPU cores paired with 16 compute unit RDNA 3.5 integrated graphics, all within a 15 to 45 watt package. I am confident that these chips will find their way into handheld devices as well. The anticipated launch for the Strix Point is set for quarter 3, 2024. Before that, we'll witness the arrival of AMD's Hawk Point processors in early 2024. However, this series lacks excitement, as it essentially represents a refresh of AMD's current generation of laptop processors known as Phoenix. On the Intel front, a fresh lineup based on the Arrow Lake architecture is slated for release in the second half of 2024. These APUs boast significantly improved integrated graphics, aiming to rival AMD's Strix Point, at least on paper. With so many product launches in store, 2024 is shaping up to be a very exciting year indeed. Personally, I am most excited to see NVIDIA's RTX 5090, as well as AMD's RX 8800 XT graphics cards. Especially the 8800 XT, because it looks like this will be the year when AMD stops following Nvidia's horrible pricing strategy and actually start offering good value products to gamers again. What about you? What are you looking forward to the most? Let me know in the comments. Also, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you for sticking around and watching my videos this year. I very much appreciate your support as well as criticism, so keep it coming, and I'll keep bringing you more videos. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! Wishing you all the best. It was I, Vadim. Until next time.